I'd like to show you how you can use the acrylic glazing technique to transition from a detailed sketch into a fully developed realistic painting. Hi, this is Matt Filio. I'm working on a 24 by 30 acrylic portrait. Uh, this is a commission with 30 people in it and I put a lot of time and, and detail into this sketch. I have everything sealed in and I'm ready to begin the painting. What I have on my palette here is some clear acrylic matte medium. And what that is, it's acrylic paint without the pigment. It's a clear polymer resin and you mix that with your paint. And what that does is it makes your, your paints semi-transparent. It makes it translucent so the light shines through and you can actually see the detail of your sketch underneath. So what we want to do to begin this painting is think of it more like a watercolor in the beginning process and just add some very, very light washes or we call them glazes. And to begin to develop the color scheme, to begin to develop some differentiation between the tonal values so we get a sense of the lighting structure in the painting. Um, and then over time we add more and more shading, more and more depth, which with each subsequent layer. Um, but the beauty of the acrylic glazing technique is that the detail in the sketch remains until the latter stages of the painting when you have enough layers to cover it up. So it, it works great because it helps you to not lose the likeness, to retain the elements of your composition. Just makes painting a lot more predictable, a lot less frustrating. Let me, let me show you the process here. Um, but before I begin that, uh, let me just dive in here with a word of prayer because this is a new painting. I do need God's help, uh, especially with a commission like this. So Father, I ask a blessing on this painting. Help me to be able to capture the likenesses of the subjects here, what I've sketched in. I pray you'd help me to retain that as I paint. Help me to be able to um, mix the colors appropriately, apply them appropriately. I pray that you would bless the students watching in their own portrait painting, Lord, or whatever they're doing. Um, help them to do it with excellence and provide for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so like I say, I have the matte medium here. And if we look at the reference photo, just kind of zoom in on that so you can get a sense for what's going on here. All right, so this is the reference photo that I'm working from. And like I say, a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people in one painting. Um, and I'm adding, um, well, what I'm gonna be doing is basically blocking in, blocking in the composition. Um, so we have the, the greens and the trees. We've got a lot of colors in the people. We've got kind of some earth tones in the foreground. Um, but I want to get some immediate differentiation between the greens in the trees and then from the sky. So that's what I'm going to do first is just block that area in. And I just kind of wanted to show you my reasoning behind this kind of the plan that I had. And it's good to have a plan for your portrait. Just like when you build a house, you don't want to just dive into it with no plan. So in the same way, we're going to kind of follow a methodology here. All right. So I have the matte medium. I'm going to take my uh, size 8 flat brush. And let's see. Let's take some ultramarine blue to start with. And we'll add just a bit of Indian yellow to that, which will give us just kind of a nice base green very simple simple mixture of color and you can see that here now we take that and we start applying it to the to the trees so what I'm doing it's almost just like a coloring book we just start to fill it in now this brush allows me to cut around the subjects with a great amount of precision And if I use some diagonal overlapping strokes, I can get a really smooth application. I always keep a wet edge, so I just work from section to section, um, left to right, because I'm right-handed. Now if I go over the subjects a little bit, that's not a big deal. In fact, it's better to overlap than to underlap. 
because it's a lot easier to paint the subjects as a positive shape on top of the negative space of the background than to try to blend in a halo around the background if I don't paint all the way up to the edges of the subject. So it's okay if it goes over the edge. I try not to, but if it does, not a big deal. Now you notice I'm going very light and I have a mixture of about you know, 90, 95% matte medium to about five, 10% paint pigment. And you'll just barely, barely see a difference here uh, as I apply this. So we, we start off very, very light, um, very translucent. And then we just um, get more opaque with each layer. Now, if you have any questions at all as you watch, just go ahead and write a comment as you have the question occur in your mind. Um, and then I'll, I'll answer that question. I'll do my best. I, I try to get into YouTube every day and check my comments and answer questions. So if you have a question, go ahead and write that in. And while you're thinking about that, why don't you hit the subscribe button so you can keep in touch with me. And when I put out a new video, I'll let you know right away as I have a lot of useful tips to share with you um, from many years of portrait painting. And uh, like this video if you, if you find it interesting or helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, give it a like, share it with a friend. Okay, we're continuing the process here. And we're just, again, using some diagonal strokes. Now I have to mix some more because I ran out. So again, we're using Indian yellow, ultramarine blue, matte medium. And might need just a little more ultramarine blue. Now this is probably a different way than what you're used to painting and that's okay. I have many, many artists that are using this method and they love it. I don't say it, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but for the artists that I work with, in my school they just love this method and uh, gives them great predictable results and in fact many of these artists are, are doing commission portraits now with very little experience I mean they've only been painting for months some of them and they're already doing commission portraits um, so you know give this give this method a try this this glazing technique I'm going to need to move the microphone, so sorry if there's any crackles there. Okay, we just continue. Continue this process. Yep, and we're going to fill this all the way around the subjects here, like I said. There we go. So now we have some differentiation with the sky. And then with that, the next step is to do some work on the foreground. And I don't always paint background to foreground. Sometimes I will do the foreground first if that's the area of the most immediate contrast. So with this I'm going to add some more matte medium to my palette. And then I'm going to take some raw sienna because that's the color that I can see within my reference photo. It just looks kind of yellowish but an earthy yellow. So raw sienna would be the color to use for that. So I just add that here to this matte medium. Maybe just a touch of burnt sienna. Okay, and then we just start applying that. And I have to keep in mind there's some shadows. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this glaze only in the shadows in the front because actually the area to the left of this is a cooler tone, it's getting reflected light from the sky. So I'm just observing the reference photo and trying to paint what I see instead of what I think I see. But over time as you paint you begin to understand what's going on and the environments that you're painting. And when you understand it that does help you to be more intentional 
about actually putting those elements in. So for example, we have shadows coming down uh, from these people. Typically the shadows are um, cooler in tone, but these are warmer in tone. And they're more of like reflections than shadows because it looks like the ground maybe was a little wet, like it, it rained. And, and then we have this reflected light on the sky. Now if you see that in the reference photo, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let me just scoot the camera down over there. I'll show you here in the picture. See how it's warmer in the front? Kind of like reflections or shadows coming from the people straight down. This color is kind of brownish, yellowish brown. And then these colors here are more bluish. So that's why I'm glazing it the way I'm doing it to leave a spot for those areas. Now, once we get past, yeah, this figure right here, then everything is just solid. Get a little more raw sienna. Yep, everything is just solid here. So we're just going to fill this whole area in. nice thing again about the glazing technique is you don't have to get it right the first try. Now it does take longer to do a painting with this technique but it will give you really rich saturation of tones. It really really develops a great sense of depth of vibrance in your painting um, and then it, like I said it really allows you to um, add a lot of nuances as well and it allows you to preserve the detail in your sketch. So we'll just bring this glaze up into the background. Yeah, I can paint over the people. It's probably, it's just easier to do it that way. And then just kind of bring this up into the background. Just blend this in a little bit. Okay, and I just realized I needed to fill in a little spot for the grass over here on the left. Forgot that. So let's get that in. There we go. All right. And I think that is it. Now there's some colors on the people that maybe I could include, like just a little bit of green on his shirt. I try to see wherever else I can employ the color. But for the most part, the colors on their clothing looks kind of different, so I will leave that for another video. Yep, we'll leave that for another video. And I'm gonna stop off right here. So, Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, uh, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and uh, check out more of my videos at realisticacrylic.com where I have several tutorials and lessons that you can take at your own pace to help you become a better portrait painter. Uh, so thank you so much for watching. God bless and we'll talk to you soon.